Okay, so we're going to look at a problem that asks about what is the motion doing of these two blocks sliding down a ramp. So we have two blocks on a ramp. That ramp is at 20 degrees with respect to the horizontal. They're connected by, we're going to just assume a massless string. Um, the masses are given there. There is friction on the ramp, but they're different materials. So the coefficients of frictions for the first block and the second block are slightly different. What is the tension in that string, and what is the object doing? Is it speeding up, is it slowing down, or is it going at a constant rate as it moves down this ramp? So that's the problem we're going to look at. All right, well, we're interested in the tension, and that's a force, so we're going to, the first part anyway. So we're going to do a force analysis, and we're interested in what that tension is, so we need to do the force analysis on an object that experiences that tension. Well, I have two of them, so we'll just pick one. Which object should we start with? Let's just start with object one. So we're going to say our object of interest is object one. All right, let's look at the forces acting on object one. Do a free body diagram and then subsequently a force tree. So what are those interactions? So we know gravity acts. So we have the force of gravity on object one. And the force of gravity on object one is between object one and the earth. All right. We have the normal force. It is resting on a ramp. And so here's the normal force of object one. And that's between object one and the ramp. And then the string is interacting. So we have the tension in the string that's up the ramp. And that's between object one and the rope. I think that's it. Those are the only forces acting on object one. Now, when we do a force analysis, we do also want to look at the direction of the acceleration because we want to align the acceleration along one of the planes so that we can analyze it easily. So let's rotate this axis because the object is indeed accelerating I don't know which direction it's accelerating. I know it's moving downward, but if it's speeding up, it's accelerating down the ramp. If it's slowing down, it's accelerating up the ramp. So I'm going to want to solve for what the acceleration is. But I do know it's along this plane. And let's just not define the acceleration direction, but the coordinate system. So we'll say positive is down the ramp. All right. Let's do our force analysis. So we have separating our forces into horizontal and vertical, and this is our new coordinate system, so our new horizontal, our new vertical, we'll just put that coordinate system on the plane. There it is, okay. So, force number one is our force of gravity. It has a component along the horizontal direction that is opposite my angle, and that angle is 20 degrees. So when I'm up, up and down with that ramp, if I rotate that ramp, I'm opening up this angle of 20 degrees. So we have the force of gravity times the sine of 20. And I want to pay attention to direction. It's pointing down the ramp. I said that was my positive direction. So that first force is positive. Now, does the force of gravity have a vertical component? Yeah, you bet. So it's along that side. So we have the force of gravity times the cosine of 20. And typically, I'll, I'll say that's the downward direction. So there is our minus. All right, force number two, well, let's call that the tension. So horizontally, we do have a force horizontally. And it's opposite my positive direction. So we're going to say that's zero. And nothing is happening vertically. And then force number three is my normal force. Nothing horizontal and it is in the positive direction. Oh, there is one more force because we have friction. This isn't a frictionless surface. There's one more force here. We need to add friction in there. The direction of the frictional force. Well, that's in the direction opposite the motion. We know that the motion is down. It's given in the problem. So I completely forgot our frictional force. That's between object one and the ramp. So let's add that one in. It's along the horizontal direction, opposite my positive, so we have minus the frictional force and nothing vertically. Whew, good thinking. All right, so 
Let's sum these forces up. Our sum of our forces in the horizontal direction is equal to that mass in the horizontal direction. And the sum of the forces in the vertical direction is always equal to the mass times the forces acceleration in the vertical direction. We've defined our horizontal direction as the direction of the acceleration, so we know if there is any. If it's moving at a constant rate, it's going to be zero. But we know that that's um, possibly non-zero, but nothing is changing vertically, our, our vertical. All right, so let's add these forces up. We're interested in the tension that's in our horizontal dimension. So we have the force of gravity times the sine of 20 minus the tension minus the kinetic frictional force is equal to mass 1 times the acceleration of 1 in the horizontal direction. We're interested in the tension. Okay, so let's solve for the tension. We have the force of gravity times the sine of 20 minus the kinetic frictional force minus mass 1, acceleration 1, is going to be equal to the tension. Well, I know the force of gravity because I'm given the mass of the object. I'm given the coefficient of friction, so let's rewrite that frictional force as our uh, friction relationship. And now I'm going to need the normal force. So the normal force is related to our vertical dimension. So we have the normal force minus the force of gravity times the cosine of 20 is equal to zero. So our normal force is equal to the force of gravity times the cosine of 20. All right. So I have some more information. I have the force of gravity times the sine of 20 minus mu times the force of gravity times the cosine of 20 is equal to the mass times the acceleration, oops, minus the mass times the acceleration, which is equal to the tension. So I know this value. I know this value. Uh, I don't know the acceleration. I need the acceleration of object 1. All right. So in order to forget the tension, I need the acceleration of object 1. So I look for those relationships, right? So what is object 1's acceleration related to? Well, object 1 and object 2 are moving together in the same way. So the acceleration of 1 is equal to the acceleration of 2. So let's look at block 2. All right, so let's draw a free body diagram of block 2. I'm going to need a little more room, so I'm going to erase this part to give me that room. We've already utilized that information. So if we look at block 2, we have the force of gravity on block 2. We have our normal force on block 2. We know where the tension, well, the tension is pulling in this direction on block 2. And I won't forget it this time, we have the frictional force which is opposite the motion for block 2. All right, similar to our discussion over here, we're now moving, potentially accelerating along that ramp. So we want to align our coordinate system along the ramp and recognize, oh, we don't know if the acceleration is in that direction, but our positive direction is going to be down the ramp. I'm going to talk through the interactions just to reiterate it. We're not going to write them because I'm going to run out of room. The tension is between block 2 and the rope. The force of gravity is between block 2 and the earth. The frictional force is between block 2 and the ramp. And the normal force is between block 2 and the ramp. Again, cluing us into these being the related frictions and normal force. Okay, so let's use orange just to help me differentiate. Lots of equations start showing up and it's easy to get confused. So, force number one, our force of gravity. Well, it does indeed have a component. So this is the force of gravity of block two times the sine of 20 degrees. And it's in the positive direction. And the force of gravity of block two and the cosine of 20 degrees in the negative direction. So that force of gravity, although not the same in magnitude, is similar as we do that analysis from our previous ramp problem. All right, force number two, our frictional force. 
Well, that's acting in the opposite direction along the horizontal axis and nothing vertically. Force number three is our normal force and nothing is happening horizontally, only vertical and it's positive. And force number four is our tension that's in the positive direction, what we've defined as down the ramp and nothing vertically. So the sum of the forces horizontal is equal to the mass times the acceleration horizontal. And the sum of the forces vertical is equal to the mass times the acceleration vertical. So that process never changes. Which direction is the acceleration in? I just need to take a quick drink. Which direction is the acceleration in? It's in the horizontal direction, how we've defined the horizontal direction. And nothing is changing in the vertical direction. So we wanted the acceleration of this block. That's what our relationship we were interested in was. So we have the force of gravity of block 2 times the sine of 20 minus the frictional force of block 2 plus the tension is going to equal the mass of block 2 times the acceleration of block 2. Putting that relationship, we're interested, we were interested in the acceleration of block 2, but we know it's equal to the acceleration of block one. So we've got the force of gravity of block two times the sine of 20 minus the frictional force of block two plus the tension, which is equal to the mass of block two times the acceleration of block one. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, I'm going after acceleration of block one. And now I might recognize, oh boy, I don't know the tension. But it's the same tension, it's the same rope. So, if I solve for the tension, I can set these two equations equal to each other and be able to solve for the acceleration. All right, so we have the force of gravity. I'm going to solve for the tension. The tension, I'm going to move everything to the other side. The mass of block 2 times the acceleration of block 1 plus the frictional force of block 2 minus the force of gravity of block 2 times the sine of 20. So Delving a little deeper, our frictional force is the coefficient times the normal force of block 2 minus the force of gravity of block 2 times the sine of 20. I don't know the normal force, but it's of course related to the vertical. It's in our vertical. So the normal force of block 2 minus the force of gravity of block 2 times the cosine of 20 is equal to zero, which tells us the normal force of block two is equal to the force of gravity of block two times the cosine of 20. Let's plug that in. So we have the tension is equal to the mass two times the acceleration of one plus the coefficient of two times the force of gravity of two times the cosine of 20 minus the force of gravity of two times the sine of 20. All right, so I can solve for acceleration. Now, I was going after t, but if I have the acceleration, I can solve for the tension. So you could have solved for, you could have substituted all of this in for t. You could have solved for a and substituted that, and there's lots of different ways to get at what we want. I recognize that those two t's are going to be able to be set equal to each other, and that was my easier way, my, my process. But at this point, it's kind of your flavor of algebra. Like, what do you like? How do you like to tackle things? We ultimately need the tension, and we ultimately need the acceleration. So, how do you want to tackle it? Is is a little bit up to you in terms of the math. So, I'm going to set these two equations equal to each other, and I'm going to start putting in some values um, for that. So, our force of gravity of block one. Well, block one is two times nine point eight times the sine of twenty. So this gives me 6.704, and I'm going to keep four digits just to try to help a little bit with the rounding. Our coefficient, and if you see something wrong, note it in your notes, I'll sure I'll be told, and then I'll make a note in the video notes. The coefficient of block one is 0 0.1 times the force of gravity of 2 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20. And that gives me minus 1.842 minus the mass of 1 is 2 times A1. And that's going to equal.
equal, let's just simplify it. Well, we'll simplify it in a minute. Let's go over here. Mass of 2 is 1, so A1 plus coefficient of 2, 0.2 times 1 times 9.8 times the cosine of 20 plus 1.842. Uh, interesting, this is twice, ugh. you can figure out why those two numbers are the same. Minus 1 times 9.8 times the sine of 20 minus 3.352. I'm going very slow in case I make a mistake. You can catch it, again, make a note of it, and then let me know, and I'll put it in the notes. All right, let's solve for a 1. So 6.704 minus 1.842 is equal to, I'm going to keep orange now, four, well let's use pink so we've combined them, 4.862 minus 2A1 is equal to A1, 1.842 minus 3.352 minus 1.51. I'm going to bring all my a's together and bring my constants together, so I'll bring this over and this over. 4.862 plus 1.51 gives me 6.372 is equal to 3a1 divided by 3, and I get 2 2.12. 4 is equal to a1, which of course is equal to a2. It's a positive value. If I'm moving in the positive direction, careful, Miss Jew, I'm moving in the positive direction. I have a positive acceleration. I'm speeding up. So that's part B. Now let's see if what we get for our tension. So now we can solve for the tension, I have the mass of 2 times my A, so my mass of 2 is 1, times the acceleration of 2.124, plus mu 2 times the force of gravity, the cosine of 20 is this value, 1.842, minus 3.352. So the tension, 2.142 plus 1.842 minus 3.352 is equal to 0 0.614 newtons. All right, now the moment of truth. Did I make a math mistake? Is that going to be about equal to this value given I did some rounding? So this should equal the same. So we have 6.704 minus 1.842 minus 2 times 2.124. And as we cross our fingers, we get 0 0.614. All right, so we did okay that our two tensions ended up being the same, as they should. Whew, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of recognizing that there are these relationships that exist. And how, how are these two objects related? How are they um, moving together? How are they moving differently? And can we use that information to guide us? But it's using that information that's guiding us. We went after what we wanted, tension, and the physics should be telling us how to solve the problem. I can't get it. Look for relationships. There's the relationship. Go after that. There's that relationship. So keep looking for those relationships. All right, lots of work. Good job.